Okay. So, hello. Welcome hello. to The Crit. Um, would you like to introduce yourself and say a little bit about what you're about? What I'm about? Um, okay, well, I'm Ella, um, long-time friend of Emma's. Um, we met on our foundation year in Canterbury um, before we went off on... Um, greener or already pastors. I went to University of Westminster to study uh, illustration and visual communication, which is quite a broad course. Um, it's sort of in between fine art and illustration, um, sort of in a middle ground. Um, and the course is kind of all in the name visual communication. So working with lots of different mediums and um, um, Quite visually communicate, <laughs> um, and I specialised in um, screen printing and um, mostly, yeah, mostly screen printing and kind of um, photographic collage and kind of choosing images that tie together to create like a narrative, um, not like a linear narrative, but like a um, broad kind of um, web. Of meaning yeah <laughs> so that's good to explain it so um, how have you so found yeah. making art in quarantine well i haven't <laughs> um i have been feeling very frustrated probably like most already people that i haven't been making art um because i'm aware that this is such an amazing opportunity to be at home and have all this time on my hands but i haven't been doing it um and part of me thinks, well, that's okay because it takes time to kind of get into a routine and takes time to create like a new normal. So that's okay. But now I, I realise that it's been a few weeks and it's time to um, sort of force myself into that. And Grace and Perry's Art Club, Emma's Art Club for Grace and Perry's Art Club, has been a really nice way to um, to to start that, you know. Um, and especially because, you know, on Tuesday when they aired the first episode and then it was oh by Thursday you need to submit some art and I was really busy on Wednesday and really busy on Thursday and then I thought I just need to do something and it was nice to just kind of be forced to do something very quick and when I show you my piece it'll probably make you laugh um at the silliness of it and the kind of and it was like exactly what I needed to kind of just get some creative just flowing. Brill. so what was your initial thoughts when you heard the theme was fantasy? Yeah, my initial thoughts um, was a ghosts popped into my head. I thought of um, Casper the Friendly Ghost, <laughs> and I thought um, the Rolling Stones have just released um, Ghost Town, which I thought was amazing that they made that in lockdown, that they um, were able to write. A, Mick Jagger apparently wrote it in five or ten minutes, and like they could record that and write it and. Funny, when lockdown happened, um, we were out walking through the streets and we were like, oh, it's like a ghost town. And that really resonated with me. So when Grace and Perry said about fantasy, I just thought of ghosts. And I sat down in my sketchbook and started um, doing some mind maps. Uh, and I was thinking about kind of different ghosts in in our... Um, in visual culture basically so I was thinking of you know the famous Charles Dickens Christmas Carol oh, ghosts yeah. of Christmas past Christmas present and future and I thought a lot about that and I was thinking well if I'm in lockdown what ghosts would visit me so this is where my artwork was came from and I thought okay so if three ghosts visited me in lockdown what would they say what message would they try and teach me similar to um when the ghosts of Christmas visited Scrooge, what did they teach him? So that's kind of where my artwork was created from. Okay, brill. I mean, I'm want to see it now. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll um. They're actually haunting my staircase, so <laughs> I'll go downstairs. Oh, I just saw them. I'll go downstairs <laughs> and go back up so that you can see them. So Google doesn't work as well. Okay, so. So the three ghosts that have visited me are currently haunting me from the staircase. <laughs> now, they are friendly ghosts and we yeah. know that because they're made of toilet roll. Um, 
role is currently the nation's security blanket. Yeah. So it's um the ghosts are made of toilet roll to show that they have a um a kind message to yeah. share that they're not here to scare us. So I'll introduce you to them if they don't mind. Hopefully oh, they don't mind put, put the camera a little bit higher. Oh real. Okay. Okay, That's so good. this yeah. ghost is the ghost of um the past. He's the first ghost in lockdown. And he is carrying with him all of the things that have created me and influenced me and influenced my growth. So people in my life, my parents, um, my nanny, friends, my partner, Connor, um, a map of everywhere I've been, a little pencil, keys, money. So burdens as well as there's the money. <laughs> <laughs> burdens as well as good things and then these are sort of all different feelings and emotions that 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 we're carrying with us so basically everything that makes me who I am to this point yeah and um he's asking um us to reflect on who we are and you know what do we like and what do we not like about ourselves and um now is the time to reflect on all of that and then once we've done that lesson uh, the next ghost comes along and this is the ghost of the present situation and she's he she I don't know what gender they are uh, has a little set of scales like Lady Justice uh, and this ghost is asking us to reflect on who we are oh, no sorry not to reflect to evaluate who we are so yeah. after reflecting with the ghost of the past the ghost of the current situation is asking us to evaluate what do we want to strip away and what do we want to take forward so he she he is asking us to balance our scales and to choose what we put on oh my goodness sorry what we <laughs> put on to get balance within our lives um and balance out um ourselves and then once we've done that once we've um chosen how to be balanced um the third ghost comes along this is a baby ghost <laughs> and um, this baby ghost has an empty cup if you can see oh yeah it's scared well and the empty cup he's asking us to choose what requires what he requires for nurturing so whatever we balance the scales with we can fill his empty cup with and uh influence our future and grow um grow from all the lessons of the two previous ghosts well they look great so that that's the three ghosts of lockdown <laughs> so this is almost like a participation piece so you'll notice that the scales are empty and the cup is empty is that because yeah, it's for you as the viewer to look at to choose what goes on the scales what goes in the cup yeah um i mean we shall i turn the camera back around to me yeah yeah oh. yeah i mean we or being given an incredible opportunity right now, and I'm sure everyone feels it, to um, to you know, in a in a, so yeah, it's quite painful for some people, and it's also quite easy for other people, and it's kind of easy and painful at the same time for some people to reflect on who they are, and you know, um, um, is there anything that weighs them down that they really don't need to carry forward and that isn't serving them and you know um little you know worries that maybe they don't need to carry forward anymore so this is like a time where you can assess all that and assess you know am i happy how can i be happier um you know people are doing lots of sport people are doing yoga people are playing music all those things and that's really nice that's you kind of evaluating um things that give you meaning in your life and that you can make part of your life to kind of help you be happier you know i think that's so, yeah it's like what would pardon? what would you put on the scales what i put on the scales yeah, um, you mentioned burdens as well as things that have made you what you are so what would they what would be kind of the balance um i think that i have um learnt well, I'm learning, sorry, I haven't learned. I'm learning that we own our own time. And I know that I, um, even now, I when I wake up, I'm like, oh goodness, how am I gonna make the most of this day? And 
oh, what if I haven't achieved what I need to achieve in this day? But really, we own our own time. There's no one keeping a check on us. There's no one um, asking us, you know, how many you know chapters of your book did you read today yeah did you stand on your head in yoga today you know whatever that is for you um so for my skills I think I would um I would try and balance time on the skills in that way I'd put uh you know good food on there I'm cooking a lot at home good food on there reading art making all the things that fulfill me um and I would uh get rid of needless worrying I mean yeah. none of us could have predicted this so it's that age-old saying of what they say you know the things you worry about are never going to like if you, the things you worry about are never going to really happen you know it's what you yeah. don't worry about that happens you know um yeah I think that is interesting I've like Tom was saying um before and what I've said a, a lot during this lockdown, it's getting a bit worse week by week. It, you can do so much in a day and you still don't feel like you've achieved anything. And that's yeah. because actually our time at the moment, we don't have any kind of goalposts. And I, yeah. as in my career, have goalposts in terms of when I need to get work in for students, when I need to assess stuff, mm -hmm. like weekly, like tick lists, essentially. And yeah. that's not really happened in lockdown because the future is so uncertain so I get what you mean mm -hmm. about um yeah balancing out in time but yeah but actually allowing yourself to say okay I don't need goal posts so what yeah. what can I work to instead and yeah. judging what will lead to the most f feelings of fulfillment yeah because really um, at the end of the day it's like that Baz Luhrmann song you know the race is long and in the end it's only with yourself like at the end yeah. of the day it's, it's you that you know you go to sleep with at night and your your thoughts and feelings that you deal with so um you have to be doing stuff truthfully and honestly that serves you you know so that that when you go to bed at night you are happy um because you've lived like an honest day and you judge that yourself you know you're not living you know, like an Instagrammable day or whatever you're... I think know. that's really interesting about the Instagram because I have I thought I would see more on Instagram, people kind of doing these little, like, check-ins of their time. So the fact that usually out of quarantine, you'll always hear about someone making a home-cooked meal, you'll always hear about someone doing yoga. And um, I've actually seen less things about that because it doesn't mm -hmm. feel that people maybe are needing to get that sense of fulfillment from outside themselves. Maybe it is more important that the f fulfillment is from within. I don't know whether I've just got a very quiet feed. <laughs> but... yeah. I mean, on one hand, I think, yeah, people are still mm -hmm. watching Keeping Up With The Kardashians, aren't they? Like people yeah. are still kind of like doing stuff like that. And that's fine as well. Like, you know, it's okay to kind of, do stuff that you can just switch off your mind to but at the same time are are people st are people still doing fulfilling worthy things um there, yeah. there's no answer to that we don't know and it's kind of a personal question that you have to answer yourself like how am i spending my time and that is a really really tough question to to answer and ask yourself isn't it yeah i think um one of my methods to try and track that is i've been um, allocating myself little point based systems so if I eat a vegetable I'll get like five oh, points. Like if I'll do some art I'll get 10 points like per hour I spend engaged with it meaningfully um, mm -hmm. with the aim that at the end of the day I'd get 100 points but even that I'm, I've is lost its charm because you know some days I was getting maybe 60 points and feeling like well actually I still feel fulfilled mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's I think it has taught me about that inner fulfillment yeah. and being more in tune to that a little bit more and also the way I like you know what are the things that you're giving yourself points for that's actually the important bit like if you make a list of everything that you would give yourself points for like 
whether you get the points or not, it doesn't matter because you've identified those things that you want to be doing or that you feel are good for you, like eating vegetables and yeah. making art. And it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, we have to take ourselves by our hands or, you know, and be like, right, I'm the adult here. Like, listen up, you're eating vegetables. Do you know what I mean? Like kind yeah. of getting, you know, having a relationship with ourselves that maybe we, necess- we, d- we maybe neglect day to day because we're kind of rushing around or, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Back to the, um, so I just realised we've um, stranded off a little bit to talk about the art itself. I mean, what do you, how did you feel when creating it then? So it's interesting you've used words like, you know, mm-hmm. adulthood, but the piece is very kind of playful. Mm-hmm. So how did you feel making it? Yeah, it's funny how sometimes what stops me making art is I imagine the art and then I start it and I'm like, oh, this is crap, or this isn't what I imagine. Yeah. And uh, Grayson Perry is very playful in his work. So that already kind of doesn't put pressure on you. So I kind of was like, oh, I'm just going to do something silly and I'm just going to play and like it doesn't have to be serious art. Um, And when I was making it, you know so and I was like oh I want to use materials that are just around like I want to just make something that's going to be done in a few hours um um yeah and just playing really yeah um does it like do I feel fulfilled after I don't know it's just toy dot roll ghosts isn't it I feel like this conversation is more fulfilling than making them um (laughs) you know am I gonna go and make like toilet royal toilet oh my goodness toilet royal village now <laughs> like no <laughs> um like what can I make next that's kind of I don't know that's yeah that's something I struggle with I I don't know whether that's the art school but it's always a sense of I make something I'm like how could this develop into a further line of inquiry yeah what's the next thing that would be the natural development or how could I push this further and actually sometimes you do just need to do something playful be like well that was fun and then leave it because actually when you play like and then you go and play again you do another thing and then you go and do another thing you'll eventually find something that you're like hooked on or you're like Mm -hmm. oh I want to do more of that or oh there's something in that that's speaking to me you know um Mm -hmm. Like, I could have made those ghosts and be like, oh, I love making ghosts. I'm just going to just make ghosts for the rest of my life, you know? Um, And that's kind of, you only get that from playing, don't you? Yeah. But you've communicated, um, you know, some some thoughts and feelings of the current time, which are probably important to get out. So, you know, it doesn't need to be ghosts as the vehicle to always do that, but doing, using the ghost is giving you a starting point. You know, it could be, something completely different next time around but yeah I think that's interesting that you've got to express so much about your thoughts just from taking some toilet paper and having a play with it yeah that's true actually and I suppose that's kind of what's really beneficial about art whenever you can reflect on a situation and then um put it outward like outside of your own mind or you know that's good Grill. Mm, so can we hear yours yes so I'm gonna have to do a little something a little bit techy so what I'm gonna have to do is actually present my screen so you will maybe see yourself in a second oh, okay so can you can you see yourself on the screen it says it's presenting so let's see yeah so you might see so can you see now you should be able to see my drive folder no, not yet. What if I pin? Oh, yeah, can see, you know, yeah, I could just pin it to the screen. Okay, yeah. okay so um, I made two pieces um, that are meant to be seen together, but I'll show you them individually and I'll show them in the order that I made them. Okay, cool. So this is the first one. So, can you see that okay? yeah so what i might do is i'll open it in a new window just so we've got Love that it. so it's interesting what you said about play um and the fact that you know you start with an idea sometimes and you just kind of run with it so i've i feel completely embarrassed that i didn't actually take it to any kind of mind mapping or ideas i just 
I was just like, oh, I went more to a process that I felt more comfortable with, um, which was that I, when I don't know what to make, I take it to automatic collage just because mm -hmm. it's a Seemingly. process. Yeah, that has just really served me well in the past, um, especially when you need to just see what comes out of you. Um, it's very reflective. It's, it can be very um, automatic. It can be very spontaneous. So I thought, well, I'll just flick through some magazines, see what imagery calls out to me and see what I can find from that. Um, but I did have some bigger ideas of what I would do. So I started off with trying to do these quite complicated collages, whereas, I don't know, uh, repeating a lot of imagery, having all these different things going on in the background. And actually it boiled down to, I felt this particular image spoke enough just by itself. Um, so I've not really named this piece, but the idea was, um, what am I perhaps fantasizing about whilst in lockdown? Mm -hmm. Probably the only thing that I say is I just really, really miss the pub. And I don't even know why I miss the pub that much because, you know, I'd never say that I'm an absolute desperate pub goer, but yeah. it, it's kind of made me realize how much it is embedded into my routine just to be able to go into one of those places. You know, I'm still getting the same drinks at home. I, you know, go to the pub mostly with Tom so you can still have a drink with him, but it's maybe that just environment and yeah. that, that kind normality. of, yeah, normality. I think it definitely is part of my routine. So I just thought this image is really funny. It's some sort of um, like waiting trial. So he's got a bottle of Guinness and a glass on that tray going over a hurdle. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's kind of like an interesting um, interpretation of counting sheep. Like, so you count sheep oh. <laughs> over a fence to help you go to sleep. And I thought... Oh, that's like, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so at the moment I'm counting, counting waiters with Guinnesses and pole vaulting over. So it's the idea of, yeah, fantasising, dreaming. Um, mm. So that then led to a second image just because I felt I wanted to push it a little bit further um again just started off with some imagery that I thought was quite fun and <laughs> I've also incorporated toilet paper within the piece so probably took inspiration from you from that though because you kind of said to me with the little teaser oh, I've got some toilet yeah. roll and I thought yeah exactly right the toilet roll has almost become the emblem isn't it this kind of yeah it's like um, such a cliche noise isn't it <laughs> it's just this inexplicable object which is just yeah. um you know synonymous with the pandemic even though it's got nothing to do with it but people yeah, just think to do with it. yeah provided we've got even the mention of it, just you're just like uh <laughs> yeah. I know it's a bit of a it's a bit of an easy joke and it's a bit but it's also probably like one of the most absurd Completely. things so yeah, and now people have got too much toilet roll just knocking about the place. <laughs> so I thought, what what we, yeah, what if we reimagine some recreational activities involving said toilet paper? Um, yeah. So yeah, I guess kind of making these, I yeah, I wanted to say, I guess I wanted to say something, but nothing. Uh, quite so serious or reflective I guess it was just the idea of maybe the fantasies that I'm having at the moment are actually really mundane you know I do like I don't know about you you know you told me before about you know, having a bit of a crazy dream but I'm just having dreams where I'll just be like in a shopping center and it will suddenly strike me just before I wake up like oh like we're not meant to be doing this because there's two yeah. people in one place or I'll just yeah dream that I'm queuing up without the two meters or just like in the shop <laughs> it's yeah what's what's really interesting is that although the artworks are reflecting that like they're reflecting your um like desire for normality they're also like incredibly like futuristic and a bit scary like you know those women playing with the toilet roll like as if you know because we can never do sport again and like you know you're not allowed to be seen with a football so you have a toilet roll you know it's 
Oh, that's true, actually. Um, I've, I've been going um, like running and cycling quite a lot. And I'll see all these groups of people that I've obviously met up, but they'll all have bikes and they'll all be there on their bikes standing two metres apart. Just so I suppose they've almost have that as that symbol of, oh, you know, if the police comes, we're all just on a bike ride and we've just stopped yeah. for a moment. So, yeah, maybe it is or you'll always see maybe people stopping and chatting and having like shopping bags with them. Yeah, yeah like it, it's a symbol we'll see of them. Yeah, I'll... Uh, I'll funny stop presenting now funny the toilet roll is like yeah like a symbol to see of us and the ladies you know laughing when they're playing with it you know yeah. they're like oh the lovely the, you know the wonderful <laughs> toilet roll like um you said something really interesting actually just about your process at the start you said um oh I'm embarrassed that I didn't start with a mind map that's a really interesting thing to say why did you say that I think um yeah, I think it's a case of practice what you preach. And so I always say to students, you know, just um, maybe make some ideas, start with research, do some experimentation, get some ideas on paper. Mm -hmm. um, whereas actually, I haven't been following that process at all. Whilst I've been in lockdown, I've just been wanting to make art immediately. Um, because otherwise, I find it starts too slowly. Yeah. So... I don't think I've done any kind of forethought um, about what I've about what I've been producing. I've just been doing it. And that's actually given me the most satisfaction because I did think about starting a project, a full personal project. But I just, I guess I almost took the approach that no, because that's what I would do if I wanted to feel um, if this work might go somewhere. So if I wanted to display it in a public place or if it was to be you know if it was for something but this isn't for anything apart from my own enjoyment so art is wellness so why should there be this kind of starting process um but it still sometimes makes it harder to maybe justify the work to yourself but again I think that's an art school trait that we might have picked up I don't know whether you you agree yeah so much to say about that yeah but also like how do you put it in words because like you, like you're craving like the like the immediacy and intimacy like the immediacy of having an answer and the intimacy of your own mind you know and mm -hmm. just like getting that out and being able to see it and observe it and you know get some kind of sense like so make some sense of your situation and that's what collage is isn't it you know yeah that immediacy love that love it i um, um i cr oh, cringe so badly to think about it but when i did my video to send it to grayson i was like oh you might have heard of dada <laughs> and i was like of course grayson perry has heard of dada i was like it's one of the ones one of the movements that where the automatic collage parade into fine art and i was just like oh god what are you saying um but <laughs> <laughs> but it afterwards I was like well automatic collage is surreal and it was used by Dada yeah. after World War One when the world was in chaos and the world didn't make sense anymore so art didn't need to make sense anymore it didn't need to have that context yeah. and big thoughts it was just you know get the art out there it's still art you will accept it as art um yeah. but maybe that again that's me justifying it by being like oh this art movement <laughs> yeah that's so interesting how we tried to like intellectualize everything yeah and it's just not needed you know no one uh, grace and Barry is so unpretentious and no one on any of the videos was pretentious and i was just like why are you being pretentious there's no need for it but again it's that application like my art is valid here's why yeah you're seeking meaning yeah <laughs> i love him um, i love the guy jumping over the fence before you said anything about where that image came from whenever I was just listening to you and looking at the image and kind of making sense of it before you said that it was a waiter trial I thought it's so um uh what's the word like telling of the situation like you know if the waiter represents like a business okay like a pub okay that's really struggling but they still want to like serve the community you know but then there's you know but like these ridiculous obstacles in the way um 
even just social distancing and the absurdity of it all um and like just him jumping over just to serve like it was just like such a powerful image yeah, That's it's great. Um, I have been supporting a local craft ale place, which it now feels part of my routine because I used to go to this place pre-lockdown, maybe once a month, but I now do it weekly, almost in a ritualistic way, where it's only yeah. one person goes in at a time and everyone queues okay. outside, but it's all there, like proper regulars who all bring like milk, empty milk bottles because you can just oh, from the from the tap. Um and everyone is like in such a good mood queuing up to go in there and actually yeah. I quite like it and everyone's having a bit of uh, like camaraderie with each other. Um, See that? Sorry. Oh no, just so that's almost in a way I'm kind of um, engaging with this small local business much more than I ever would before so that's quite nice and and every week I'm like oh we spend so much and I know I could get it in a shop but actually every week I'm like I think I'll go and do that just because I quite like doing it. But maybe, again, that's wanting to seek the pub culture. Yeah, gosh. But also it's like wanting to seek ritual. It's wanting to seek meaning, you know, like having, like going and kind of getting farm vegetables and local ale and, you know, bread from the baker is so much nicer than going to see in sprays. And now is a time where you want to go and have nice little things, you know, it's balancing skills, you know, it's... Yeah, and that when you get a thought like, "Oh, that'd be lovely to have some local eel," you have to honor that thought because that's what gives you happiness. Yeah, so I'm going to do it actually after we've finished here. Four to, they, they just announce it on Facebook when they're open. It's every couple of days, and I'll be like four till six. Bring your bottles. Love it. Um, so yeah, so that'll be my rituals for the Friday afternoon. And um about the collages are you going to continue to collage or what like what's like I what's... feel I can dip in and out of collage at any time um just because you know it's quick and it's easy but sometimes I really tend to talk the process down as a final outcome I'll more say oh it's just to generate ideas and then I'll think of ways that I can extend it further um but actually it does give that really just satisfying release of when you want to be creative and you don't need to have any previous ideas so I think I will dip in and out of it but I really want to vary up the mediums week by week okay that's great thanks so much for sharing your your ghost Ella and look forward to seeing what you produce next week and um, thank you so much for the motivation to do it this is great I'm yeah. looking forward to next week as well okay. all right well bye bye